Bill has always been a very interesting guy. And, uh, he would challenge us on the way we do archaeology in the National Museum. Bill Longacre was a really very keen in the creation of our program in 1994, 1995. Uh, to tell the truth, he was against it. But it was in a very clear philosophical uh, position. He was a true believer of the four field system of anthropology, and he just wasn't really comfortable with the idea that there would be an independent program in the university whose sole purpose is really to push archaeological research and teaching. He'd ask questions. Uh, I remember my first Binalot topic was on, on five bracelets that I, I did. So I analyzed um, bronze bracelets in Thailand and I gave a Binalot talk on it. And we were, he was asking so many questions, but of course it was embarrassing um, at that time when I was giving the Binalot. And I realized it was actually helpful. Those questions were helpful because they, those questions make you realize how to move forward with the paper. Okay. So it's not, it's unlike other people, they ask you to shame you, but it, yeah. was, uh, it was one way for him. I think it's uh, his way to help the students, or to help scholars in general. So it was Bill who gave me all these ideas, and uh, not to be biased why I have to excavate under the tree because uh, it's a shaded area. So uh, <laughs> Bill, Bill was, uh, okay, you divide this site and then uh, you do, uh, put the number and uh, we'll do uh, statistics. So uh, this is uh, the objectivity that an archaeologist uh, would uh, have to deal in the site, not uh, the bias sampling that uh, we were used to. Kindness to many young students. Ah, okay. He never, I've never seen him turn away anybody that approached him for a conversation. I certainly, he never turned me away. Okay. Um, uh, this, despite knowing that we don't, you, know, we, you never have to see eye to eye or agree with everything. Okay. But he always welcomed the conversation and uh, he was truly a mentor in that sense. As I, at one point, organized an UGAT conference, which took place here. Uh, maybe that was around 2004. Uh, and the theme was bridging the generations in Philippine anthropology. And so, all of a sudden, it was, it was so timely that he was around also. And so he became one of the older generations that gave a talk about ethnoarchaeology in the Philippines. And I, the, the way I organized the panel was that there were these older, senior, uh, retired, ideally retired, 70-year-olds <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> faculty, uh, including Bill, and new PhDs who were uh, talking about fields, similar fields. So in archaeology, there was Bill, and across him was Mandy Mijares, who had just finished his PhD. Mm -hmm. And Mandy talked about experimental archaeology while Bill talked about ethnoarchaeology. And uh, so uh, he was also there for me <laughs> at that occasion. Uh, and uh, he's always a, a good presence to have around. But he always will make sure that the student uh, realizes later on that he was just kidding around. And he will go out of his way to help them. He's a very good teacher, um, not just in terms of content, but also in terms of motivating people uh, to pursue their dreams because um, he, he likes to mentor students. Um, he's not just a teacher, it's like a more of a, well, a, a big brother. Uh, and not just, he gave me not just, um, uh, not just career tips, but also in, in terms of personal life, for example, love life. He would comment on some of the things that I post in FB. Oh, he would tell me, I know a student who will do well, and there are individuals that you should not spend too much time anymore. 
Well, he was already working in the Kalinga, uh, doing his uh, ethnoarchaeology and testing uh, uh, women patterns and how they uh, transmit their uh, skills in pottery making from mm -hmm. uh, grandmother to mother to granddaughter. As a means to, you know, to, to answer some archaeological questions because Basically, that's the reason why he, he started or initiated the Kalinga and Archaeology Project, to use the data from Kalinga to explain... Um, a project he had before with American Indians in... Uh, American Southwest. And so he was doing this uh, cross-culturally. To come up with a very innovative research strategy in trying to answer or address an archaeological question. So in it's through ethnoarchaeology that he came here and then he sort of went back to physical archaeology after that? Yeah, yeah. Well, he told me that he was influenced by uh, Edward uh, Dossier, I think, an American uh, anthropologist, archaeologist. And Kalinga's been going on for how long? Um, it's one of the longest, so I think around 30 years. By 2002, we won him over. And since then, he was a very, very important uh, member of our community. I, I can't really talk about him as professor or academic, but because we all know that. I mean, anyone who studies archaeology should know his life as an academic. We are, to say, his second home. And for most of you, you know that, for old friends of Bill. We consider him truly one of our apples, our elder. You know, he talked about his Filipino students, and he talked about them really like his own children. That that's um, so I don't I don't know any of his, his relatives, but you know, he talked about Zandro Villanueva like Zandro was his own son, mm. and Jenny Cano talked about her like she was a, a, a real daughter, thing, which mm. was fantastic. Before he passed away, he. Uh... He gave me his blessing that I could go back to to Kalinga after my PhD to to study the to study pas, the pasil, uh, pasil tradition of pottery making, which he which he did for his Kalinga project. But he told me that I uh, I should go back after my PhD. I remember that he said when ASD was just starting um, that. Filipinos should start learning about our history and not rely on foreigners to tell Filipinos their history. He's very proud of the fact that uh, that at the archaeological project you know, that he started in Kalinga has produced so many PhD students who are now practicing archaeologists and who in turn are also mentoring. And I believe every single one of them, and I'm sure a lot of, a lot of those people are in, in the room in Arizona as this short film is being shown. Uh, he, uh, he is just so proud of all those individuals. A true mark of a mentor, I would say.